All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this video in nine simple steps with no modeling whatsoever. And yeah, that's right, I said simple because this actually only took me about four hours to complete and honestly, I work pretty slow. I'm gonna be going over my entire workflow from start to finish. This includes creating the environment, the lighting, adding the effects, color grading, everything. Subscribe if you guys find these videos useful and we'll get right into it. Okay, so step one, the block out. I plopped in three sin camera actors and then I used simple shapes to block out the scene so I don't have to worry about the composition and which assets I need later on down the road. I just like having the whole scene planned out so later on I feel like I'm just filling everything in and making it look cool. In this project I have three separate shots so I had to block out each of those. I started with the final shot as it pretty much has every element of the scene in it. Also, I need to tell you guys about the camera settings I used. See, I wanted to focus on making everything look a lot more cinematic so I had to use specific camera settings to do this. First I made the aspect ratio of the Sin camera actor 2.39 to 1 which by the way is 35 millimeters by 15.07 millimeters. I also added a motion blur to the entire level by adding a post process volume and under rendering features I adjusted the motion blur amount to 0.5. Then to make the post process volume affect the entire level I checked off infinite extent unbound. I also adjusted the focal length of every camera to 80 which will increase how much the camera can actually see but it will also give you more precise control of the focus distance. Having the subject in focus with the foreground and the background looking kind of blurry will also greatly add to the cinematicness. Lastly, I also filmed this whole scene in 24 frames per second, which is actually done in the sequencer. With 24 frames per second, the blur between frames will make it look a lot more realistic. Step two, gathering the assets. See, I didn't model anything for this project, so I had to download a bunch of assets to use for it. I downloaded this free character from the Unreal Engine Marketplace, which by the way, is actually Ray from the game Paragon. This free modular space station pack from the Unreal Engine Marketplace and this skybox pack also from <laughs> the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Once everything was imported into my level, I started filling out the block out with the rocks and the modular space station meshes. To fill in the ground and the mountains in the distance, I brought in this giant landscape. Brings us to step three, editing the landscape. See, the landscape plays an important part in this scene because the ground is decently flat and then the mountains in the background are being used as leading lines to point towards the subject, which is a pro tip, by the way. If you wanna have good composition, use leading lines to point at your subject. So if you go to this dropdown menu, you right here that says selection mode change that to landscape mode and now you can edit this landscape like it's made out of clay i selected this flatten tool to flatten everything out as what i'm going for kind of looks more deserty and i don't really want all these small hills and bumps in the scene then i changed my view so i could see through my third camera selected the sculpt tool and sculpted the mountains in the background so they match what my block out looks like by the way when you're using any landscape tool hold shift to do the inverse of what the tool does so the sculpt tool will pull the landscape up but shift clicking with the sculpt tool will push the landscape down. All right, step four, lighting, which is my favorite part. Okay, so to light this project, I first dropped in a skybox, which is basically just a spear that has its material applied on the inside of the mesh, not the outside. I scaled this up to surround the entire scene, and then I applied one of the skybox matte paintings I got from the Unreal Engine Marketplace to it. After that, I adjusted some of the parameters in the matte painting texture. The skybox gives the illusion that there's a bunch of clouds in the scene, but in reality, it's just a painting of clouds. I also added a skylight and directional light and edited the parameters of these as well. To make the scene more gloomy and foggy, I added an exponential height fog and a sky atmosphere and adjusted their parameters until I got the look I was going for. By the way, turning on volumetric fog within the exponential height fog really helps add realism to the scene as it'll give all lights a bit more atmosphere to them. Then to finish off the lighting, I added one singular rectangular light to the space station because I thought it looked cool. Okay, there's one last thing we need to do to finish the building of the world and that's adding a sandstorm with Niagara VFX which is step five. <laughs> Start off, I opened my content browser, right clicked in an empty space, selected Niagara system and used the hanging particulates template. I opened up the particle system and adjusted some of the parameters underneath initialized particle to change the size, speed and direction of the particles. After that, I enabled engine content within the content browser and found this material called M smoke sub UV black body. I duplicated that material, opened it and then deleted this black body section of the node setup then it connected this particle color node to this multiply node. This basically just makes the material white instead of black. Back in the particle system, under sprite renderer, I changed the material to the new material I just made and then changed the sub image size to eight by eight. Now, instead of the particle system spawning a bunch of circles, it's spawning the smoke images in that material. But as you can see, the sandstorm kind of clips through the ground, which looks super weird. To solve this, I opened the material graph and then added a depth fade node 
into this bundle of nodes that are plugged into the opacity of the material. Then I plugged in a constant node, which is basically just a number, and connected that to the fade distance in the depth of fade node. This node setup basically makes the material kind of fade away when it gets close to the ground. Okay, step six. So another thing I want to add was actually a light on the shoulder of my character, um, which is actually a pretty easy thing to do. To do this, I created a new blueprint using an actor as a parent class. I added a skeletal mesh to the blueprint and then selected my character to be the blueprint's skeletal mesh. After that, I positioned a spotlight on his shoulder and that's pretty much all you gotta do. Next, step seven, animating the character. To animate this guy, I clicked this track button within the sequencer and then selected my character. To add the animation to him, I just clicked this plus icon and selected it. The animation was a bit faster than I wanted it to be, so to slow it down, I right clicked the animation in the sequencer, navigated to properties, and then changed the play rate to 0.25. And there we go, he's all animated. Step eight, animating the camera shake, which is also a pretty easy thing to do. To create the camera shake effect, I right clicked inside of my content browser, selected blueprint class, and then used camera shake base as a parent class. I clicked this little plus sign icon beside my camera to add the new blueprint to it and then change the root shake pattern of the blueprint to Perlin noise camera shake pattern and then adjusted some of the remaining parameters. Okay, at this point, everything is pretty much finished up in Unreal Engine. So I rendered every camera view out as a JPEG sequence and then brought all those sequences into DaVinci Resolve for the final step, which is color grading. I started off by adding five different nodes to each clip. I used the first node to adjust my levels. My project ended up being a lot darker than I meant for it to be, so I brought up the blacks quite a bit and then added a slight S-curve to the levels graph. For my second node, I adjusted the color. Here, I tinted the whole scene a slight blue. Overall, I think the key to not making your projects look over-edited is to make all of these color corrections super subtle. With my third node, I used this shape tool to create a slight dark gradient in the corner of my second shot. I did this because I felt like the right side of the image was a bit too bright and taking some of the attention away from the subject. I used my fourth node to create a slight green vignette around my entire project so everything felt a bit less monotone and blue. Finally, I added a fifth node to my second shot to add some glow to my character's helmet. To do this, I added a post-effect glow to the node and masked it out with a circle. I then tracked the circle to the character's helmet and then slightly faded the edges of the mask. And there we are, we're done. All right, if you guys wanna keep learning more about Unreal Engine and how to make cool stuff like this cinematic, subscribe because I'm gonna be posting stuff like this more in the future and that's it. See ya.